All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for round five, I believe it is predictions. Obviously, I didn't do the round review this week, as you may have seen on Instagram. Had a bit of a shit week, to be honest. If this uh, that last week had been an animal, it would have been an absolute pig, but it's all right. Back on the horse today, and I'm just going to be talking through my tips like I've done so far this year. And of course, part of that will be acknowledging some of the things that happened last week as well. On the plus side though, despite not doing a round review, I did manage to do a podcast over the weekend with Collingwood YouTuber Swoop Luke. That will be out on the channel in the next week or so, and I've got another collab or two coming out with Druzy shortly. So, behind the scenes, stuff is still getting done, thankfully, um, but obviously just working full-time makes it a little bit harder to get it all done every week. Now, as I did in the last couple of tipping videos, guys, I'm going to take you through who's leading the True Footy Podcast tipping competition. We've got 209 people, and I'm ranked a dismal 137th, I think. No, 107th. That's actually not as bad as I thought. I scored four on the weekend, and my dad, my dad, scored seven out of nine in an absolute horrendously unpredictable round. I thought maybe, maybe it was just me as I went down by 31 ranking spots. As much as I love my dad and he's a smart guy, I doubt he would have been able to name last year's top four. Uh, so I have no idea how he's flogging me so far in the tipping competition. Uh, where is he? He's actually top five as well. That is just heinous. Cardman, the YouTuber, is currently top of the competition. That's insane. He's absolutely killing it. He got eight last week. The actual winner of last week's round was a guy called Benjamin, the Bulldogs fan. Nearly perfect round of eight and a margin of five. And my boys, Sean Pro and Cardman, make up the top three as well. So well done, fellas. You're absolutely leaving me in the dirt. To start the video, guys, I'll take you through what the current ladder is going again on squiggle.com. Again, the cool thing about this is you get to see what the ladder looks like before and after you do your tips for the round. So we got Port Adelaide still on top with 236%. Gold Coast and Brisbane are second and third and Hawthorne make up the top four before Collingwood, Geelong, St. Kilda and Essendon round out that top eight. Geelong have really bounced back into that top six. North Melbourne, GWS, Sydney, Carlton, the Bulldogs and Richmond follow. And the bottom four is a sorry tale for those hub teams. Not that it has anything to do with the hub, but you've got Melbourne and then West Coast, Fremantle and Adelaide. And there's been a big gap between the rest of the comp and that bottom three, I would say. Uh, absolutely shocking football from West Coast in particular in the last three weeks and include Adelaide in that. And I hate to say it, but Fremantle's probably playing slightly better footy than the Eagles, although I'm still pretty confident we'll beat them in a couple of weeks when we take them on. Anyway, guys, let's get into the round, knowing that, of course, circumstances changed this week, which I think generally is kind of concerning for the comp if Victoria's having coronavirus spike. I don't think we're out of the woods in terms of actually finishing this season. I don't want to be too doomsday, uh, but oh, it's hard to see exactly what is going to happen in the future. But obviously, they're kind of reducing the travel, particularly from Victoria's sides, uh, this round. So a couple of games rescheduled. But we'll get into the round. We've got Carlton and St. Kilda, two teams that are generally not pretty good. I'm not good at tipping, to be honest. Uh, I don't think I've tipped Carlton in either of the last two wins. Um, I think I tipped them to beat Melbourne when they didn't. They lost by a point. Um, so I have to go with the opposite of my instincts. I should probably do that for every game I tip. Coming up against St. Kilda against the, is a side that's playing some pretty good footy. They touched up Richmond last week. It was a good game of footy, I thought. Uh, although, of course, Richmond aren't playing their best footy. Uh, it's really hard to get a read on both of these sides. They're probably, at the moment, settling in what I would say is a similar part of the ladder, although you do have St. Kilda is up by 15% on the Blues. But I think they'll be competing for that lower edge of the top 10 this year. But anyway, going off my gut of who's going to win this game at Marvel... I'm a little bit more confident in St. Kilda. So there you go, St. Kilda fans. I've done it. I've tipped your boys in an absolute thriller by 11 points. Although I'm sorry to say that probably means they're going to lose. Next up, we have the Collingwood Essendon, what would be the Anzac Day Clash at the MCG. The, uh, the Pies uh, narrowly lost against the Giants in Sydney. On paper, it's not really a bad loss at all. Uh, coming up against, you know, our grand finals from last year on their home deck. They, uh, they put in a fairly solid performance, I thought, as a neutral. I thought it was a good game of footy. But, of course, the injury to Jeremy Howe is going to be pretty... 
uh, pretty, not devastating, but it's a blow definitely for their back line, although I do hear Tom Langdon is not too far away. Coming up against Essendon, who had a disappointing one-point loss to Carlton. I know Carlton just beat Geelong and are uh, enjoying you know, a good run of form. Uh, that is a disappointing loss from their perspective. Although, of course, having played one less game, they're still 2-1 and one and can be fairly comfortable with their at. Look, I've been talking up Collingwood this whole season so far. I'm going to back them in as the better side to win this by about four goals. Oh, God, this is a tough one to tip. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> I love my boys, but they are playing shocking footy. Got absolutely butchered by Port Adelaide in a game where, you know, I thought there was no real reason for us not to play well. I've talked about us not being good in contested, greasy conditions, and this was an absolutely perfect day at Metricon Stadium. And the power, well, full of confidence, came up against the Eagles, who probably have less confidence than just about any team in the competition at the moment. Um, and I don't think they made a good account of themselves. Are they going to snap out of it this week against the Sydney Swans? Well, they just had... Um, I wouldn't say too disappointing loss at home against the Bulldogs, I guess, when you come off a, an away win against North, who were playing good footy at the time. To back that up with a home loss on paper seems, you know, a bit rough, but to be honest, I don't think they're playing bad footy for a side that, you know, I, th- I said was going to be bottom four this year. It's a Metricon Stadium. Obviously, there's no form lines between these two sides at this ground. I'd, I would back in my Eagles, but Sydney just fucking beat us all the time. Uh, I don't even remember the last time we beat him. Was it 2017, I think it was? Um, I'm going to say Sydney get the job done by about three goals. Geelong versus Gold Coast. uh, I mean, you know, I would have made the case that Geelong just don't lose at GMHBA, but evidently that's not quite true. And Gold Coast, uh, in ripping form, uh, would I go as far to say they're one of the form teams of the comp? Not really. Had a narrow win against Fremantle. They butchered Adelaide. They butchered West Coast. Two poor teams. Don't get me wrong, I'm playing good footy, but it is another leap for them to get the job done against Geelong, who I don't expect to play as bad a footy as they did against the Blues. That being said, Geelong had a fairly unconvincing win over the Demons by three points at the MCG. So they haven't really enjoyed... So they've had a really mixed bag, actually, since the, the restart. Obviously, they butchered Hawthorne, who have played good footy since. And then they've put in two fairly mediocre performances. Look, I don't know if... I think this will be a bridge too far for this young Gold Coast side. Geelong won't let this slip. They're going to win by 23 points. The Bulldogs and North this is a hard game to peg. Fairly fairly even sides in terms of their form lines. The Bulldogs, obviously, have had two good wins in a row against both the Sydney sides, one away from home and uh, one at home. Coming up against North, who also beat GWS away in Sydney, and then uh, last week had a disappointing loss. Although it was, you could say, a fairly weird game. They came back at the end against Hawthorne and nearly got the chocolates. Again, no, they're not really playing bad football at all. I would say going into this game a little bit more comfortable with the Bulldogs' recent form line. So I'll back them in by a goal. It's going to be a good game. Brisbane Lions and Port Adelaide at the Gabba. Now, Brisbane are trucking along fairly well. This season so far, round one was a bit disappointing against the Hawks, but, you know, it's a tough opponent. Since then, they've uh, they've beaten Frio in a fairly good game. They've belted West Coast and they've belted Adelaide. So I'd say they're trucking along pretty much similar to how they were going last year. Maybe not quite at the same intensity versus Port Adelaide, who start the season well again, 4-0. But, you know, the opponents they've played, Gold Coast when they weren't playing well, uh, Adelaide, West Coast and Fremantle again. Those are some of the worst teams in the competition on their day because obviously round one was a while ago. I don't want to write off Port too much because, look, they are playing good football and they just butchered my team. So I don't want to discredit them. And look, I think they're looking really, really good for finals. But my point is the Lions at the Gabba will be a tough opponent and by far their toughest contest so far this season, I would say. And that's why I'm going to go conservative and tip the Lions... Although I definitely give the power a good shout to win this game. Adelaide and Fremantle at Metricon again. This is a fairly simple one. Fremantle will get off the off the mark. Adelaide have been butchered by, you know, most teams they've played this year, other than Sydney in round one. And look, a percentage of 52 really speaks to that. It's a bottom of the layout of clash. Honestly, I think Fremantle's form line has been so much higher than Adelaide, or so much better than Adelaide's. Um, you know. Nearly got the job done against Brisbane, which was a great effort. Tough opponent. And uh, then they've had some close losses or close-ish losses to Port and Gold Coast. Maybe not close for Port, but 
It was really only one quarter that let them down in that game, I thought. Long story short, Fremantle, clearly the better side. I'll give them a four-goal win to leave Adelaide outright bottom the ladder. Next up, we have two... Well, if you look at the ladder, two fairly average sides, 14th versus 16th. I don't know if that's exactly how I feel. I think Melbourne have been a little unlucky to not have an extra win or two. So, obviously, they, they lost to Geelong last week, and I'm quickly going to look up who else they've played this year. Okay, so that's right. They had a delayed game against Essendon, and then their other game was they beat Carlton by a point. So, still a bit of an unknown quantity, considering that was a weird game against Carlton where they led by so much and nearly lost the game. But since then, Carlton... Since pretty much halftime in that game, Carlton's been really good. Um, and then to nearly beat Geelong, it's a solid performance. Richmond is struggling at the moment. Um, I'm going to tip Richmond because I just think they're a better team. Um, and I don't really have any other instinct that's suggesting that Melbourne's going to win this game. Of course, they could because Richmond are you know, not playing too good a footy. But obviously, the ceiling that Richmond can produce and bring to a contest uh, is that is higher than Melbourne's. Let's, let's be honest. I know I'm going to cop heat for that, but look, bottom two last year versus the Premiers. A 14-point win, it'll be a scrap, and Melbourne will be the unlucky losers. GWS versus Hawthorne. This could be a very good contest. Uh, I think the last time they played, Hawthorne killed them in uh, in Canberra. Not that it's really related to this. And then after that, GWS went on a massive form streak that got them to the grand final. This is a tough one. So GWS obviously had a good home win, a tough win against the, the Pies. Um, by two points, it was a bit of a thriller. And I felt up to that point, maybe still, that Collingwood were the benchmark side of the comp. So, um, massive tick um, after, you know, a disappointing loss against North not long ago. It was a good comeback win for them. Uh, To contrast that, Hawthorne has been up and down as well. So, they butchered uh, Brisbane in round one. But then, you know, disappointing performance against the Cats. And then a really good win against Richmond. And then a decent performance against North and then, you know, nearly blew it apart in the last quarter. So again, one of those teams that's just been up and down. I rate them on their day and I'm just going to tip with my head here and I'll say the home side who I rate slightly higher is going to win this game by... Ah, Let's go with 15 points. All right, that is the end of the round. So if we look at what the ladder will look like at the end of the round, I still have Port on top. Brisbane is second. Uh, moving up into second, Collingwood in third, and the Cats are into the top four now, despite not playing some of the best football that we know they're capable of. Gold Coast still a fifth, St. Kilda sixth with their win over the Blues, and GWS and Sydney, the surprise eighth spot um, after I tipped them to beat West Coast. Hawthorne, Bulldogs, Richmond uh, moving up, North Melbourne down to 12th, uh, Essendon, Carlton, Fremantle, and Melbourne are the next four, and then shockingly, my West Coast Eagles will be 17th at the end of this round with one on four, percentage of 72, on track for a bottom four performance. God, I hope it doesn't eventuate that way. And Adelaide, the 0-5 team with 56%, which I think will set up another bottom two clash second week in a row with West Coast at Adelaide. Uh, The following week, I think we're playing him at the Gabba. So God help me if we lose that. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. I really hope things are more accurate this week. I uh, I have tipped against West Coast this week. Last week, I had the double burn of tipping the Eagles and they lost. This week, I've tipped Sydney. That way, I will be very pleased if I get my tip wrong and I will be thrilled if we can move out of that bottom four sooner rather than later. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.